You are watching Wilderness Quest Outdoors with Jay and Leah. So I'm here at Nether's Farm, Flint Ridge, uh, Flint Ridge Chert Quarry. I'm just knocking on stuff uh, other people left behind to see what I could take. That's That big boulder there is uh, what people are trying to get into and knocking pieces off like this. So uh, it's everywhere. But I'm uh, I'm basically picking through people's scrap, and uh, I've never been this close to a flint car flint quarry before. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my balance on this stuff. This is um, way more waxy than I'm used to working. I'm just tapping it and flakes are flying off. But, uh, I've been wanting to come here for a long time. There's a uh, farm out that way. And then just all these chert quarry pits. Pretty amazing. I'm excited. Oh my god, it's so glassy. Oh, I have to show him this. Hey there. So, today we are in Ohio at a place called Nether's Farm, quarrying for chert and flint. Uh, there's Flint Ridge chart here and chalcedony of all different colors. Whites, browns, tans, black, red, uh, sort of like a, a banded black and white. And there's quarry pits just open all over the place and there's flint. Flint, flint, flint everywhere. Jay's got his bucket full of rock. So the way that this place works is the landowner has been gracious enough to allow flint nappers to, and stone workers to come onto the land, pay a small fee and 50 cents a pound per rock um, using the honor system. And they just let people come in and quarry the hell out of their land. Look at this. Look at this pet. Isn't that wild? You can see some of the bedrock with the flint rapane running through it over there. And all the chert. This is near where they have the big Flint Ridge nap in. And there's about, oh gosh, six or seven giant pits we've found so far. Let's see another one up here. So you can either come in and bring a sledgehammer and a giant pickaxe or something and really get in to the dirt, into a freshly unearthed rock, or come and just pick the surface, like, I don't know. I've heard other people talk about how the stuff that's on the surface here is not really that great, you know, lots of damage, too hard to work, and yeah, I mean, there's damaged pieces, you can see some water damage and 
rock rot there. But there's still like a lot of good stuff lying around. Let me check this. That's a pretty nice piece of flint, isn't it? Small chunk, but get a point out of it. So, we got into Ohio last night, uh, came through, there was torrential downpours, uh, flash flood warnings all over the place. Uh, we went through a few small towns where the intersections in the, you know, main square was like river rapids. It was wild. Um, some cars just plowing right through like it's nothing. but. I don't risk that kind of thing. I say it only takes, you know, a few inches for your car to get swept away, so we tried to stick to higher ground and then uh got into the campsite just as twilight was really starting to get taken over by night. And we could not really see um that the ground was really, really, really muddy at the campsite. So we just tried to go into the campsite to pull around, turn the car around and all, and get ready to set up for the night. And the car started sliding downhill in the mud towards a raging creek that was itself in flash flood. I thought we were going in. <laughs> we probably got about a foot, foot and a half from the edge of a steep bank right next to the sign that says warning steep drop off but luckily Jay was able to steer uh, our out of control slide just enough that we sort of swung around and didn't go in but then we were stuck in the mud tried to get out just wasn't happening the wheels just spinning 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 it's no good while I'm talking, I'm going to show you some more of these pets. Jay testing stuff out. Having the time of his life. He's in rock heaven. <laughs> but yeah, so we were spinning out. We tried to get a, we had like a pizza box in the car. Tried to put that under the tire. That didn't really work. The pizza box just spun out and went flying. Uh, so tried putting um, some wedging some sticks under. Oh, you should check out this stuff. This is like really modeled and banded gray and white. Oh, look at that! Isn't that pretty? See that little crystal veins? See them? Ooh, sparkly. Fancy. Some of it's starting to grow crystals. Don't know if that'll come up. It's really sparkly. Start of like druzy crystals or something. But yeah, so we started trying to put uh, sticks under the tires, and um, we didn't have any chains or anything like that, you know, which we probably should have, but we weren't really intending on off roading, we just were trying to turn around on this campsite. Um, and there was nothing we could do. It was like no getting out of it. But luckily, there was some uh, kayakers who were going to camp and head out on the water the next morning, and so I waved them down. And between the three of the guys, we were able to push the car up and out of the mud, and we were free. And it all ended well. <laughs> Slept well. It was a good night. Rained a little bit off and on, but not too bad. And then this morning was gorgeous. As you can see, beautiful blue sky. Um, it was my first time into Ohio. I had no idea that eastern Ohio is 
absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. Rolling countryside, rolling hills. Uh, a lot of forests. It's really, really, really beautiful. There's more black over here. Did you see it? Didn't get there yet. Right on. Um, when we were crossing over from, let's say, West Virginia into Ohio, across the Ohio River, it's really stunning. Really stunning scenery. Beautiful. But then, here's some of that bandit stuff. Yeah. Cool. Look at this stuff. Oh my god, it's so glassy. Oh, I have to show him this. Wow, it's like glass. So smooth. Do you feel that? Wow. Awesome. Yeah, I gotta take a sample. <laughs> take a sample back to the stone man. He's used to working like, uh, you know, chart from New England, so. Um, Norman Skill or Onondaga or Rhyolite, Argillite. That stuff is so tough. I've tried. I've tried napping a few things and it just... I don't know. I can't get that stuff to really work for me. But this, this looks more doable. Check this out. Feel that. There's like a whole bunch of it over there. Next pit over. What are you thinking about this stuff? Grainy. Grainy? Oh, look, there's crystals. Ooh, sparkly. Oh, that would be so awesome if you could get a point out of this, but leave some of this. I might be able to. pretty wild to think that all this stone is probably the result of just guys standing around doing this. <laughs> pretty cool. I guess I'll show you the last few pits that are down here. Did I show this one? I think so, right? We spent a while over in Maryland with my family. That was excellent. I haven't seen them for a while and God, it's just it's so good to be surrounded by family and laugh and talk and just seeing everybody together. It's just, it feels really good, you know? So that was a great, great visit. And uh, now we're going to start heading back north, sort of slowly. Um, oh, look at that bird. I saw you trying to get that bug. Are you pretty? <laughs> you almost got him. I got this pet. You know, it's no wonder this stuff doesn't just slice right through my shoe. That is a pit. Don't know how well this will come out on camera. That's a good... Gosh, I don't know. I'm bad with judging distances. Maybe 30, 40 
feet wide. See another mound over in the distance. There's one further up there. And then the trail goes further back, but I haven't really explored down there yet. <coughs> So, I think that we are going to head south, no, yeah, south from here, down to the National Forest and camp out for, I don't know, we'll see, a few days at least, it's a uh, dispersed camping. Um, we did stay in, I think it was, yeah, it was Wayne National Forest last night, and then tonight we're staying at um, some kind of... I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like an energy company owned this land and they did mountaintop mining and then now they're done with it so they're trying to turn it into a park and campsites and all that. Trying to reclaim the, uh, the land I guess. So we'll see. We'll see what that's like. If it's if it's weird or, or anything like that, then we'll head back to um, to the national forest. But I'm interested in seeing how uh, how well the earth can heal from the mountaintops being taken off. Um, and it's a place you need to get a permit, but it's free. Free camping. You just need a permit, which uh, you can either get at beach shops or um, print out out of home and that lets you stay there for 14 days something like that so who knows we might stay a few days might head to a new spot and then I guess we'll go to Meadowcroft Rock Shelter there's a cool place I'll show you this other mound I'm not gonna walk over there there's another pit though but yeah, Meadowcroft Rock Shelter is a museum where they have a, um, evidence from the earliest habitation, or earliest known habitation site of people in the New World, or something like that. I think it's like 16,000 years old, um, one of the oldest. Paleo-Indian sites, if not the oldest uh, currently known site in the U.S. Speaking of, see that edge work? Is this modern or is this old? Don't know. Go show Mr. J. <clears throat> There's really not too much information on this site that I could find. Like, I don't know how long it's been a quarry for. Um, but, yeah, so Meadowcroft is a museum, and they've also got, like, a, I don't know, a um, little village set up of what life was like in 1700s, 1800s, and prior. Apparently there's a few different little villages in addition to the uh, um, excavation site for the archaeological dig. And I know he's really interested in saying that, given that he is very interested in, in the first Americans. Well, you know what I mean. First people here. Can you imagine that? Coming onto a new continent and being, you know, the first like 10, 20 people onto the land. You just come through an expanse that's just empty. Check this one out. What do you think of those edges? if it's newer or not. That's what I was saying. If 
you just make this? Mm. Oh shit, look at that. Awesome. Is that modeled gray? The, I tried to keep some of the crystals in. Made the point look funky, but... <laughs> That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. What do you think? Just leave this bay? Yeah. Alright. Sit it right here. Somebody else can figure it out. Um. So, yeah. From Nether's Farm in Hopewell, Ohio. Come get your rock. Check back in with you guys later. So we're near Caldwell, Ohio at AEP Recreation Land at a Bicentennial Campground K. All of these sites are free, just need to download a permit, sign off. beautiful country. We're right near Wayne National Forest as well. Not too far. We stayed at a, I think it was Sawmill Road campground last night in AAP land. But tonight we're here by Centennial. We came down here and saw this lake and we're like, yep, let's do here. Uh, they've got a little bathhouse up there and water pump. Picnic tables, fire ring. <laughs> the water coming out of the pumps, though, is not quite clear. But it'll be good for putting out the fire. So I want to show you this lake, surrounded by uh, cattail reeds. We've seen some rabbits, and birds, and there are fish down here. The water is really clear. Looks like the previous previous camper threw some uh, hamburger buns. I don't know if you're going to be able to see these fish. They all swam away. There were a bunch. So this land is owned by a power company does mining and apparently uh, in the 40s or something like that um, they had done mining here for a long time and they created this recreation or they're calling it recreation land to try to uh, heal the land I guess and uh, let nature take back over There's quite a few trails and campgrounds available to the public. So 
our lovely new tent. All nice and cozy. Usually we take this uh, rain fly off. It's got mesh underneath so we can look up at the sky at night. That'll be our view tomorrow morning. I know of a spot here called uh, Nether's Farm that has uh, flint. It's a uh, flint rich. It's a modern quarry, so you could go there, you can collect flint, and it's a uh, five dollar collecting fee plus fifty cents per pound. She has a little uh, scale set out, a uh, little cat that's out there usually, and you put it in an envelope, write your name and just slide it under her door. Bring buckets. Stuff's good. So we're coming up on Nether's Farm. And the pull-off to the quarry is on the left. Careful <laughs> driving on the flint. I already popped my tire once this trip. Um, I believe it was right Your here. destination is on the right. So here's the pull-off for the quarry pits. So I guess that was some flint ridge that I found up the camp. Oh yeah, looks the same. Cool, I'll take this piece. And there's some uh, crazier colors here. Let the fun begin. Yeah. There's a big chunk of the black over here. So you can get a video of this. This is a quarry pit. So here's a modern quarry pit. See the big, the big rock is right down in there.
Now this outer stuff, see this, let's see if I can show you. So it's black inside. Am I still bleeding? I think it's your lip. Mm hmm A little bit. I see the piece I'm after. I don't know if I'm gonna get it. So I've already knocked away this whole chunk here and that's in my bucket and I'm going after this piece here it looks like a nice blue black and I don't know if I'll be able to get it so there's a lot of crystally stuff down here but this is the piece I want one of the cool things about the front here is it's got some pieces have these little druzy crystals and as you can see right there, that thing. Let's see if I can get it to sparkle for you. There you go. And just make it out. Now if you take this and polish it in like a rock tumbler or whatnot, it'll make some really, really beautiful polish stone. All kinds of color veins going through it. Alright, now that I'm bleeding everywhere, you could see the little crystal pockets that the rock is actually not too good for flint napping. Um, I'm sure I could get something out of it, but I'd rather bring home the best rock I could find here. So I'm going to move on down to the next quarry pit and wipe all this blood off of me. Ow. Flint is sharp. So here at Nether's Farm, the flint is all different kinds of color. The ones I'm grabbing is mostly black. I like to work darker material. But if you look along the trail here, and even up at the other quarry pit there, some of it's clear, some of it's pink, some of it's red, some of it's zebra striped. It's all different kinds of, all different kinds of colors. I grabbed some of the zebra striped stuff. You could see the similarities in the pit location from where we were at the um, ancient quarries. You can see how modern people with modern tools did the same thing ancient people with ancient tools did. Except they probably did it better. If you look, you can see it's so similar to those swimming pool pits I was talking about. It's just straight down. And I read that this particular flint vein is uh, 10 to 12 feet deep. So it goes down deeper. 
I'm going to try to find different colors and get a good variety this time. So I'll be uh, poking around in here. So, some of the giant boulders that were here in these pits when I was here last year are completely gone. So somebody, you can see there was one right there, it's just rubble now. Somebody came in and tried their best to get slabs. Like this. This is what people are after. This one was thrown away, and I could see why it was thrown away. Because of this crack running through. And this one running this way. So the, probably the only part of this you could use is right here. That's why. Crystals? Although I'm sure Leo will want this. Hold on, hold it still. Oh, it is all crystal. Cool. Oh, you can see inside. Uh huh. <gasps> awesome. I'm gonna knock some of it away so you could keep it. Okay. So over time, lint stops looking like flint. Um, even this one, you could see it's a dull, not as shiny black as say this. And then as it gets older and older, starts to change and it starts to get freeze damaged from the cold. And what happens when you have that is inside becomes all damaged and you can't use it. This will not make a good tool. So that's why a lot of people have tossed this stuff and that's why ancient people toss this stuff because the top layer has freeze damage on it. If you look over here, fresh rock deeper down. So if I knock this piece off, it's going to be really fresh and really glossy. But if I take from up there, it's going to be really dull and not so good. I'll give you an example of right here. I'll see if I can knock a piece off. Just gonna try to take a small piece off for you to see. I don't wanna ruin this outcrop. Here's freeze damage at the top of it. Okay. I'll give you a little zoom in. I just knocked some of the black off. And in here is freeze damage. Or they call it a seam or a crack or whatever you want to call it. Most places that you can get flint is not like this. This is an insane amount of good flint, good chert. 
uh, the landowner is kind enough to let flint nappers come on her property and quarry this themselves and just dig these pits. This was somebody's throwaway because of the crystal pocket that went straight through. But I'll still be able to use this, so I'm going to keep this one. I just took this flake off. I'm going to keep looking around. That's it. Uh, there was another one, wasn't there? They filled it in. Oh, they did. And they dug one next to it. Huh. So this is the gray stuff. Gray blocky stuff. I think it would be cool to find a good piece of this to work into something. The problem with this stuff is uh, it's blocky. You can see there's blocks. Instead of a smooth transition, it chunks off. There's a good example. And somebody lost their belt. Are they trying to haul the whole rock out for the belt? this piece. That's freeze damaged. That's weathered. You could see how crystalline and grainy that is compared to the smooth the smoothness of some of this stuff. Let's give it a try anyway. Yeah, that's no good. Make sparks. So this is the pit here. The rock is gone. But it looked like this, and uh, some people from the Wooded Beardsman's channel might recognize this material from his Easter egg knife giveaway but there's uh, there's not much left of this rock so when the rock is gone the rock is gone that's it it's nothing big enough for a knife of that size out of that material again so freeze damage? Yeah. Blocky? Yeah. 
The big, the big block of it was right there. It's gone. Remember I just took the hammer, the hammer stone actually, and I hit the top and the big blade came off? Yep. That was the knife. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So. Looks like the only pit with a uh, new rock in it is the one right at the entrance. All right, I'm just gonna keep testing rock and hitting on it until I find something smooth, not like this one. And I'll let you see what we uh, what we finish up with when we're on our way out of here. I didn't get all too much and it got kind of late, but what I did get was pretty good. And I'm just gonna bring it up, to her, bring it up to her porch, and she has a scale up there. And I'll just sign my name and pass the money under the door. I'm gonna come back uh, probably in a day or two and quarry some more. For more than ten thousand years. Flint Ridge was one of the most important flint quarries in eastern North America. So I came north into Ohio because I know of a spot here called uh, Nether's Farm that has uh, flint. It's uh, Flint Ridge. It's a modern quarry, so you could go there, you could collect flint. Um, I decided I wanted to visit the ancient quarry, which is in Flint Ridge State Park where you, you can't touch anything there, don't touch anything there. I'm gonna go check out the ancient quarries, and I'm about two minutes away, and then I'm gonna head over to uh, Nether's farm to collect myself some Flint Ridge. So I've never been to the ancient quarry before. Uh, I don't even know which way it is. But there's a sign here, for more than 10,000 years, Flint Ridge was one of the most important flint quarries in eastern North America. The flint formed at the bottom of a shallow ocean 300 million years ago. The softer rocks surrounding the flint have washed away, leaving the hard flint exposed near the surface. Prehistoric people came here to quarry the flint, which they crafted into a variety of stone tools. Hundreds of quarry pits and workshops are scattered for miles along this ridge. Well, it looks like there's a trail over there to the museum. I'll check that out first. There's a little chipmunk in the path down to the quarry trails. There's another one right there. There's a third one. Oh. So here is what the flint looks like. This is right below the sign here. Flint is both hard and brittle and thus can be broken into pieces that have razor sharp edges. For this reason, Indians as long as 9,000 years ago traveled to this ridge to secure the rock for making projectile points, knives, and scrapers. The area is now covered with hundreds of shallow pits from which flint has been quarried through the ages. The prehistoric Indians broke off chunks of flint with stone moles or pried them out of the pit with wooden poles. They broke the chunks into usable pieces with hammer stones, as shown here, and then proceeded to chip the flint for various purposes. So along here, all these dips are quarry pits. We'll keep looking around. There's a little bit of flint right here. Probably from in there. Really cool. So we came up this trail here to this hill. And right here is um some different kinds of flint different colors 
And here is where the quarry pit is, where all these leaves are. You can't really see. Maybe if I put it down to the ground, you could see that it dips. You could tell this is not just a random dip in the woods here. That's dug out. And it's pretty big. It's it's hard to tell on film how big that is. Here's one. There's one over there. Here is probably another one. This one's filled with muck. Anybody watching my videos, you should never disturb an archaeological site. You should find other ways of getting flint, like I'm going to uh, a modern quarry, not too far from here, called Nether's Farm. And I could very easily get flint there. Whenever you see stuff like this, do not touch it. Just look at it and learn from it and appreciate it. It's everywhere. You can see all the little chips. Little tiny chips of flint. Very, very cool. There's all these deep dug out areas. They're, they're right next to each other. There's one here, then it goes up and goes into a ramp and into an even deeper one. I don't see any flint chips here. I mean, there's a few down here. A few little chunks. Must have taken a long time to dig that out like that. It's kind of just like they were digging, like a swimming pool. So this is one of the bigger ones I've seen here. And just like modern quarries, it, you know, they fill with water. This one is filled. So now it's pond. Looks like there's more way off that way, but there's no trail over there. How did they know it was here, like, walking through here? If I was just walking through, I wouldn't know that there was flint under the ground, like right under the ground. And like, are we near a major water source or an even bigger hill? I just don't, I don't understand how they found this stuff in the ground. I could understand finding it in rivers, but then how do you figure out where it is in the ground? The stuff here is so old. The stuff just laying here. If you look, on one side you can see it's rotting. The rock itself, this at one time was shiny and glossy, and now it's turning brittle and rotting away. There's more right here. It's just rotting into nothing. But it's so, so old. Thousands of years old. So what do you think of this place? It's old. <laughs> more pets ahead of us. Yep. Getting bit. Mosquitoes. Yeah. <laughs> There's another pet. Oh, I can't really see it too well. What yeah, it's really hard to pick up pets. Maybe I'll go stand by it. Yeah, they're big. So there's a few chips here that still have the, the real, real shine to it. Glossy, glass-like. 
Now these are artifacts, so you don't touch these. But I just wanted to show you, like, you could see through that. And in comparison to something older and rotting, this is what it looks like now. So right here is, uh, looks like fresher stuff. It's way more colorful. This piece here, you'd see the pinks and the white, brown and white. And it's all scattered through here. So I guess to answer my earlier question, of how did they find it up here? Just walking down the trail here. And I see this shine. If you dug this out, this would be a massive boulder. But you crack that open inside and it'll be nice and smooth. It's another big outcrop right here. This is all just amazing to me. This is just washing out. And each one of these was made by a person. Like, you cannot make these without knocking them off with another rock. You have to be... In order to make these flakes, every single one was made by a person. <laughs> 